and we're back and we finally have the GI Yaris. We've been waiting for this for ages. It's been on back order for everyone, but it's here, the GI Yaris to review for our leisure and for your viewing. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel, the usual spiel and support us like that. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps us a lot. Anyway, let's get right into it. All right, now we're at the front of this little beast and you've got a huge front grille with a massive intercooler that basically takes up the entire space of that grille. You've got GR badging over here and a sneaky little shout out to Toyota for the awesome JDM Gazoo number plates. Now you've got two air vents over here to basically cool the brakes, but that works a lot better on the Rally E. And you've got Yaris lights over here. Now there's three elements about this that are the same as the stock Yaris. It's the headlights, the tail lights, and the side mirrors. Now on the side, this car is built so differently to the stock Yaris. At the front, you're about 50 mil, so five centimeters lower than the stock Yaris. And at the back, you're 10 centimeters lower, which isn't good for sitting inside at the back, but it is for rally standards so that could fit a huge exhaust on the back. On the top is a carbon fiber roof. That's right, there is a Yaris right here with a carbon fiber roof which is just to make it a lot lighter and it's got a nice polymer wrap on the top and a lot of aluminium that is around the car to make it a lot lighter. Something cool about this is that it was built in a cell, not on a normal mainstream production line, which is basically for one-off special editions like this. They take a Yaris and the back of a Corolla and build it by hand at the LFA factory, which is just insane for a car that costs 50K. I strongly believe that Toyota is losing a lot of money with this, but it's a cool halo project that Mr. Toyota himself wanted to do. This Yaris takes 10 times longer to build than a normal Yaris, and there's only 25,000 built. But with so much demand, I don't see why they would stop unless they're losing a lot of money. All right, so we have 18 inch forged alloy wheels here with Dunlop Sport Max tires. Now, if you opt for the Rally E, the performance version, you get the Michelin PS4S tires, which are better. Now, the one cool thing about this little rally car are the brake pads. They are huge. They are 356 millimeters on the front, which is bigger than the brake pads on a Supra. Just insane. They are 356 mil on grooved front discs and four pot calibers and 297 millimeter vented rotors at the rear with two piston calipers and high friction pads all around. Now at the back, you've got a spoiler and a diffuser that Toyota says creates some downforce or aerodynamic advantages. Looking at it, I'm not really sure that they do, but anyway, I'll take their word for it. The exhausts are real. There's no fake plastic there to make it look a lot bigger. That's just what it is. Although it's a pretty average exhaust, but it's still real at least. Now the car itself is six centimeters wider than a standard Corolla for track track is basically the distance between the wheels for improved cornering. It also allows for flared wheel arches to improve the aero down the side of the car. Now this boot is tiny. It's 141 litres, that's all it can fit. And if you put the seats down, it gets to about 750 litres, which Toyota says is enough to put four spare wheels for a track day. So I'm glad that they're thinking about the track because that's the most important thing with this car, but the boot is small. And that's thanks due to the battery sitting underneath it for the car. Instead of being at the front, they wanted space for some sort of air coolant. So they put the battery underneath and they've left this really small with this flimsy little bit here for the boot. Now that we've seen the outside, let's look under the bonnet. Now Toyota has made, redeveloped this new three cylinder 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, which is the most powerful three cylinder engine in the world and the smallest and lightest 1.6 liter engine in the world. World records all around for Toyota. Now that's all in a car that weighs 1,280 kilos, which is just insane. It's got 200 kilowatts of power and 370 newton meters of torque in this tiny little Yaris. It's just mental, which comes to about 260 horsepower. Although people on the dyno have seen it pull 270 or more. So they might be pulling a Porsche where they're lying about it and being really humble about their machine. All right, now I'm gonna try to get in behind my driver's seat. This is the seating position I would be in. 
and I could even sit further back, but I put a little bit forward. So I'm gonna show you how to squat in through somehow. All right. Okay, I'm not the biggest dude, uh, but not too bad in terms of leg room. I mean, once the chair's back though, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit further back for the person to feel themselves. Knees aren't too bad. Now, because this is arched 10 centimeters down, you're, that's my head touching, touching the roof. Uh, so your headroom is not very good. It's obviously gonna be quite crammed in here and they have taken out this middle seat. So there's only two seats here, which is probably a good thing because it is really tight, but this is a rally car. It's not made to be a comfortable cruiser. So you're not gonna have an awful lot of headroom here. Legroom isn't too bad, but for short rides, it could be all right. You probably will have to just sit a bit lower and slouch a bit. But yes, this is the back of the GR Yaris. No USB ports or anything because it's pretty bare bones, but that's it. Just be ready to hit your head if you are taller than me, which is 183 centimeters or about six foot. Now to get out of it, you basically, that's it. I mean, it should have a feature where if you push the button, it'll allow the chair to slide as well, but it doesn't. So you have to slide it manually. But let me get out of this. Oh. Oh. That was a bad idea. Okay, I got out. All right, now we are inside this little guy before we take it for a spin and talk more. Inside, you've got very nice seats at the front with the Alcantara sort of suede leather and the bucket feel, which sort of hugs you in. Now, I'm not the biggest guy, so it might be a little bit tight for someone that is a bit wider. You have one of the most important things I'm gonna mention before I go into all the tech is the manual handbrake. Hooray, not a little electronic button, just manual. Then here you've got a nice little label that says developed by the FIA World Rally Championship and the GR logo. There's a lot of GR logos on the seats, on the floor, just everywhere. And then you move up, you've got your start stop button. Turn it off always, because start stop is annoying. Your traction control turns off and your IMT, which is the button to enable uh, the rev matching when you're downshifting. Now you've got your gear shift here, which is five centimeters higher than the normal Yaris to allow you to quickly go from your, sh your stick to your wheel. Great. Uh, here is your button that changes from uh, sport, track, uh, and normal, and your 12 volt and one USB port. So there's only one, but I mean, it's your little race car. You're not fussed about those sorts of things. You've got uh, seat heaters for the front, the right and the left, which is an added luxury I was not expecting, but it's great. Only one heat setting, but you click it. Sort of sounds like a really old school analog button that you press. And then you've got dual climate control. You've got a little space to put your phone as it sits in there and a seven inch display that does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is all you really need. It's a bit of a basic system. It's the same as the sort of other standard to Toyotas, the Yaris, Corollas, Camrys, but you're not really here for all the Lux features. You just want the rally car. Now you've got JBL speakers, which do an okay job. They're pretty decent. I mean, it's a small car. You don't need the craziest system and you sort of want to hear the engine, hear the car, enjoy the car. So the JBL system isn't too bad, but it definitely could be much more basic, which it's missing. Now on the dash, you have two analog dials and a little digital display in the middle that shows your speedo and your other fuel consumption figures, all wheel drive and a few other little modes that, that will show you. It also lights up when you go into sport and track mode. We also have a heads up display, which is fantastic because the analog displays are a bit dated. And then your steering wheel, which has another GR logo on it. It's got all your volume control buttons, your menu buttons, and all your cruise control options as well. Now there's a bit of cheap and hard plastic around. You can sort of feel it and see it. A little bit of Alcantara on the side here, but it is just a very thin layer. And that's the thing about this, is that it isn't the most luxurious sort of thing on the inside, but that is not what you need from a GR Yaris. You want a rally car, and that's what you get. And it costs 50K. If you want something more luxurious, then go for the Euros. But this is a whole different type of beast. 
something that is great and something that is not so great. Not so great is this mirror, it's huge. It takes up so much space and the rear sort of view from there is really small. I mean, it's a really small rear view window back there and, you, and this mirror is just much bigger than it needs to be and takes up a lot of visibility down the front in the middle. I've seen a lot of people actually sort of take this out and bring it forward so it's closer here and it allows about three more centimeters of just ability to see in the middle because you're missing it's basically that's the gap you've got from this display to the mirror so it's just tiny something that you could look at changing something great is the handbrake is the moment that you engage the handbrake it deactivates all-wheel drive mode so toyota toyota is basically telling you to drift this car in a yaris so as soon as you sort of flick the handbrake up boom you're drifting that's the way it works now you have a much higher seating position because they've got that rally car feel that they're trying to give it's a rally car but i think you sort of need it so you can see on top otherwise usually you do like to sit low in a sports car it's just sort of preference but this is a lot higher than normal and it might be tough for someone taller to fit with a helmet if you're taking it to the track i'm in the lowest position right now i actually can't get any higher so just look at what i'm sitting as this is the lowest that you could be sitting so there is the interior of this little bad boy now it's time to take it for a drive all right let's talk about this drive train this is the first all-wheel drive system toyota has made in over 20 years and unlike other hot hatches it is purely all-wheel drive all the time whereas other hot hatches are biased towards the front and then just kick in a bit of rear when they need it but this is purely all-wheel drive now in normal mode it puts 60 percent to the front and 40 percent to the back this differs to sport mode which puts 70 percent to the rear and 30 percent to the front and then track mode which is a perfect 50 50 split so your options are completely different which is exactly what you want if you want to go around windy roads you use sport mode if you're going to the track then you use track mode where you need that traction and you need that all-wheel drive what this all-wheel drive system means is 0 to 100 in 5.2 seconds and everyone has recorded that as being much more than much quicker than 5.2 a lot of people are hitting even fours on a stock Yaris GR so it does unbelievably well so the engine has a lot of competition focused elements including things like multi-oil jet piston cooling machine intake ports and large diameter exhaust valves as well as an aluminum oil cooler and high capacity pump and what these do is enable the engine to open up better and to feel more comfortable when it's being pushed and it will last it will be reliable the single scroll turbo uses ball bearing internals for basically quicker spool up and the intercooler is just this really big cross flow sort of design the pistons are pent roof which basically means it can combust more efficiently without losing as much heat and even though it's a three cylinder it will last so you don't need to worry about that toyota reliability still stands now on the road it feels really good it's not going to be the most comfortable everyday cruiser but you're buying essentially a rally car for the road and it does that daily job quite well if you want something that's more luxurious more of a cruiser than other european alternatives might be best for you but this still does a really good job road noise isn't too bad it can get a little bit rattly at really high speeds on the motorway as such but there is sort of this active noise control insulation that tries to stop that speaking of noise the exhaust it could be a lot better there's no pops and bangs um, it's a three cylinder what do we expect they have emissions to follow um, it sounds okay they actually augment the sound through the speakers from the engine um, just to amplify the sound make it feel a little bit better but it's still a bit disappointing um, you'll hear it in a second as I give it a bit of a push and see what it's like so we go here it's it's okay it could be a lot better now the brakes are absolutely marvelous they are spot on you can sense zero brake fade that's something incredible that they've done with this because they're so big those huge <laughs> sorry i just had to do that back to the brakes brakes are exceptional 
They do a really good job, as you would want in a rally focused car. It's direct and the size of the brakes on such a small car, it's just so rally-esque. To put 360 mil brakes on a Yaris is just crazy. There's tricky aero everywhere from spats in the front of each tire to a lot of underbody covers and steps built into the inside of the rear bumper. So it's made to be better. And the reason that they put the Corolla from the back onto the Yaris from the front is that while the strut front suspension remains the same from the Yaris, although they retuned it with new knuckles, stiffer bushes and so on, the rear swaps out the standard car's tiny Torsen bar setup for a wider track, trailing arm and a multi-link arrangement. And that wider track is six centimeters wider, which is just crazy, which means insane steering. Basically, thanks to the column's tricky construction, there's basically next to no shock feeding from the wheel that you can feel when you're driving it. So there's a direct connection to the wheels, which is really, really impressive. They kept the McPherson struts at the front, but then obviously put the rear double wishbone suspension in the back, which means it can go anywhere and feels the same. Weight has been carved off all around the car, but the highlights are the carbon roof, the aluminium bonnet, the doors, the tailgate, and a lot of lightweight steel all around. And while this is a rally car, it has Toyota Safety Sense technology. So it's got the active lane keeping assist that will keep you in your lanes. It's got active cruise control. So when you're cruising, it will slow down and speed up according to the car in front. It's got forward collision alert. So it'll stop if you're too close to the car in front. Uh, blind spot monitors, it's got it all. It's got all the safety features that you would expect in a modern day car in this rally car which is great. Now it's got crazy handling, crazy power. Turbo lag is minimal. Obviously from zero to basically 3000, it's gonna take some time to take off, which is like most cars. But once you're above 3000, it spools up unbelievably quickly and it's just ready to go instantly, which is really, they've done a really good job with this turbo, especially with the three cylinders to mix them together is just a really good combination. Such a small car, so efficient. You probably get eight to nine liters per hundred on the mixed combined cycle. If you're hitting it hard a lot more, obviously that's gonna be a lot higher. It might be pushed over to 1012 on a spirited drive even more. But this car just ticks so many boxes and for 50K is unbelievable. Plus a few K, four, five K if you want the Rally E. But this version is great. Now the Rally E does get more racy benefits. It's got the limited slip diff at the front and the back, whereas this does not. It's got the Michelin tires. It's got more airflow coming through it and the suspension which has been tuned. Now competitors for this car would be the likes of Audi S1, which is has only 170 kilowatts. Then you've got the Merc A250, but you gotta pay extra for Formatic, four wheel drive. The Megane RS, which is front wheel drive. And then the Golf R, which costs, you know, five to 10 grand more and only has 13 kilowatts of more power. And everyone's got one, like it's very easy to get one. These are rare because only a limited amount were made. And this beats all of them, except for, you know, luxury features, which it cannot win on, <laughs> unfortunately. But I am not really fussed about that stuff. It's not something that I desire when I'm getting a GI Aris. I'm looking for an insane rally car that I can also drive every day comfortably, and that's what it does. Sure, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it doesn't really bother me that much. If I was driving many hours a day, then maybe a little bit, but it does its job really well. So to conclude, this is awesome. Hopefully Toyota makes more than 25,000 as demand is definitely there. If you're after a luxury, comfortable hot hatch, then maybe one of the Euros is better for daily cruising. But if you want an absolute weapon that's unique, there's not many around, then this is the car for you. Please support the channel and subscribe so we can continue reviewing cool cars and maybe some not so cool cars. And we'll see you in the next video.